towards right. So as soon as I hit X, the FSM should go back to the starting state Q0 and do its processing again. So this completes one cycle of AB finding matching. So I find A, leftmost A, I go towards right to find an equivalent B, I find B, then I uh, move the TF head towards the leftmost A and I found a I, I found X here, so X with uh, this, uh, uh, so I do not write anything to it and uh, move to uh, move the tefer towards right. Understood? Now the next sequence will come. Then again I will write, uh, for this A, I will write X, okay, move towards right. The FSM will be in Q1. Now for any occurrence of A, it will go towards right. Okay, now here you can see also you are getting another Y while moving the TEF head. Okay, so you completed A, now you are getting uh, the first Y which you have replaced uh, from means with B, means you have replaced B with Y. So that Y, for that Y, what you should do? So with Y, you should not touch anything and move towards right. Okay. Now you will get a next B. So that will be my next B. So for this B, what will happen? You will write Y and now make the TEF head towards left. Now while moving left, what will happen? The first symbol it will encounter is another Y. So in Q2, what you should write? So with Y, it should not do anything and move towards left. Understood? Now it will move towards left, so with A it will again move towards left till I till it hits this X. Now with this X what it will do? It will switch back to Q0, that means two occurrences of A, B, A, A, A and B, B has been matched. Okay, then it will go towards right. So it will first, then it will change this A to X and move towards right. It will then skip this A, then it will go to then it will skip the Y's and go to this B. It will match. It will write Y to it. Okay. And then it will go back to left. While going left, it will skip those Y's through this transition. And uh, A's also it will skip. Then till it hit the last X. So with last X, again it will find A. Okay. Understood? Any doubt? Yes, sir. Okay. So, so it will write X, it will go to B, it will write Y, then it will try to move back. Now, now while moving, uh, so, so after everything is completed, what is happening? So, after everything is completed, now the TEF head will move towards left from this Y to this left. It will reach at X, okay, and this X it will move towards right. So my pointer will be at this Y. Understood? Any doubt? Okay. So I am in Q0. My TEF head points to Y. So what will happen? So I can write with Q0 with Y. Okay. If now I have to accept the string because I have already processed everything. Okay, so I will check if if anything is there. So with Y, what will happen? It will remain in. It will uh, just write Y and move towards right. Okay, and it will go to Q3. In Q3 also, it will just write Y, it will see Y and it will, uh, means I am just moving the tape towards the blank symbol B. Okay. And if I hit a blank symbol, I can just uh, say that it it is accepted. Q4 is the final state and it is accepted. Any doubt? Now please tell me clearly, means if it is not understood, 
so the so the algorithm first first what we did uh, for to accept a given string in terms of a Turing machine, we should just visualize that how through the movement of a tape head and how by writing some symbols I can solve this problem. Okay, so what I am doing, I am just writing x moving towards right, leftmost a. Then I take the leftmost b, I am writing y moving towards left. Okay, so if any mismatch comes, suppose my uh, my string is a a b b b. Okay, what will happen? So with q0, it will write x move towards right. With b, it will write y move towards left. With a, again, it will write x move towards right. With B, it will write Y move towards left. Okay. Now with this X, so so all my A's are over because with this X, if my input, my starting, uh, the FSM is in starting state Q0, and I have a Y input symbol. Okay. So so I'll proceed through this way. So I'll just continue to skip the strings of Y. Okay. Now if for B, so uh, you can see that for the last B, I am in state Q3, but no transition has been defined for B. Understood? That means the Turing machine will halt. Understood? So, and it will reject for the string A, A, B, B, B. But if there has been no B, so if it is exactly matched, what would have happened? It will just, uh, it, it, it would have reached the state Q4 which is a final state and it would have accepted the string. Understood? Yes, sir. Okay. So this completes the, I think you can try your uh, own problems, uh, means how to construct a Turing machine. So these three questions, uh, I have collected it from previous years. So, so this way the Turing machine design problems are solved. Okay. Now I'll go through quickly uh, some more things. About the language that is accepted by a Turing machine. So, so till now we have seen that I have a machine DFA or a NFA or a Epsilon NFA and what is the corresponding language that is accepted? Tell me. Regular. Regular. Okay, then uh, I haven't taught you but you must have been taught that there is another automata called pushdown automata and what is the language accepted by it? It's called context free language. Okay, similarly, <coughs> similarly the behavior of the Turing machine can be categorized into two parts. Hence, we can classify the languages that are accepted by a Turing machine into two parts. So, so what, uh, so what is the flow diagram I have shown you regarding the Turing machine works? So, either it goes to an infinite loop, which means I cannot decide. Okay is an undecidable problem okay and if I can decide I, I does not go to an infinite loop that means I halt halt is equal to yes halt is equal to no this is the flow diagram so if if the Turing machine halts then what can happen either it can reject a string or it can accept a string okay so those languages, so I can say that the languages are classified into two parts on the basis of Turing machine behavior. One is called recursive language. So a recursive language is one which is accepted by a Turing machine M. And the behavior of Turing machine, of that Turing machine is such that it always halts. Okay, it never goes into an infinite loop. So I can say a recursive language
a language which is accepted by a Turing machine M okay and M always halts and never goes to an infinite loop 